Hello Ace, this is Retro TK2 and today we're once again going through Randall Wayne's diary. I'll do a brief analysis of some of the key sections and I'll also be showcasing the developer artwork as I'm doing it. So let's get stuck in. October 15th, Thanksgiving. Today was a day to remember. My wife made me a great stew again. The whole family had dinner in silence, but it was a pleasant silence. It's not always necessary to fill the emptiness with words, right? Instead, Lydia was a bit sad for Nick. She says that he deserved better. Nick deserved better, and I think that we all deserve better. At least Nick's meat was tasty. Nick, here is the turkey, because I actually thought that that was, it looks like a strangled dog in the picture, but um, no, uh, Nick, Nick's actually a turkey, and, you know, Randall had to kill him for the Thanksgiving feast. So the turkey dying, the fact that it's Thanksgiving sort of plays into this too, but it's sort of like the turkey dying is a sacrifice of food, um for us and that's i guess why you need to be thankful it's interesting because this is a, a really nice family moment and one that doesn't require words it doesn't require it's like this happy moment doesn't need to have speech it, you don't need to be doing something it's just you're eating dinner and you're sitting there with your family and your loved ones you're surrounded by your loved ones it's like a, a really nice moment a really good moment but even then that perfect moment couldn't happen without sacrifice and, you know, the death, of course, of a turkey. So even, so Lydia, his daughter, is still sad. So even in a happy sort of family atmosphere, there's still sadness, you know, in the air, it seems to be. Which is just life, isn't it, you know? Typical of kids, the way they insist on personifying the world around them and on giving names to everything that they find. I had to break Nick's neck myself with my bare hands. It's, this is a. This is definitely getting him ready for the the new world, the world that is going to eventually become, uh, that he's you know had to kill a turkey with his complete bare hands. He's he's. It's sort of like a coming of. I want to say a coming of age for him, but he's thirty three. So he's, although he is a man, you know, he's. He, this is just adding to his masculinity. It's like, yep, it's now my responsibility. I have power over life and death. It would seem of of certain living things. It's not that I am a coward. But I don't like killing animals with my hands. Again, another really interesting one. So he, he doesn't like killing, which is really good. But the world that he's about to go into is going to force him to kill. He will have to kill in order to survive. So he will not like killing it. But yeah, he. this is sort of like getting him slightly ready for it. Even less so when it's got a human name. This That point there, it, this is really an important one as well. So he doesn't like killing things, even less so if it has a human name, which is really, really interesting because if you remember, certainly in the final stages of the game and no doubt throughout his survival, he's had to kill, he's probably had to kill several people, um, you know, several bad people, you want to call them, and, you know, part people of the new law as well that he had to kill in order to defend himself. He doesn't like killing animals and he doesn't like them killing them even if they have a he doesn't like killing them if they have a malicious motive and he also doesn't like them if they like killing them if they have a human name so it's again foreshadowing just for whenever he's actually going to have to kill people who have human names because of course well all human beings have human names but uh yeah really interesting uh, it's, it's 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 surprising the amount of the level of effort that the uh, certainly the writers of this one uh, went to in my job sometimes i have to sacrifice animals that are sick or that pose a danger to others. This is really important too. He has to sacrifice animals that are sick. Again, the, 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 the reference of the, the, you have to sacrifice animals that are sick is really important here because of course, zombie apocalypse, uh, you know that the virus is coming. They're sick people. Um, and it's more so to do with the people, I guess, probably who have just died. So the ones that just die and are going to turn, you have to sacrifice them then because otherwise they'll turn and come back as a monster so it's it's really really interesting this class yeah you, you, yeah it's sort of yeah yeah so uh sacrifice those who are sick or that are a danger to the others so it's the ones who are sick uh, the, the humans eventually are the ones who are sick they will die and then they'll come back as of course the monsters and be a danger to others so it's like you've got to sacrifice them as soon as they died or close to their close to their final demise you have to kill them shoot them in the head 
and uh, sacrifice them so that they don't become a danger to others. It's brilliant writing. I know that all deaths are the same, even if it was a turkey with the name of a used car dealer. So all deaths are the same. So even though that he's going to have to kill humans that are against his cause, or of course the shadows, all deaths are the same. It is, it's really, really interesting because he doesn't want to get comfortable with uh, killing, which is a, a testament to the man. He doesn't want to be eventually corrupted by the world that he's going to be going into. October 19th, they have sent a message warning the poachers. Ben Parker, an acquaintance of the town, made a phone call to the warden's office. It seems that he saw some hunters in a protected sector. Ben is a good guy. I think he's the only man in the town who I can talk to. I saw him in the mountain, and he's not one to look for trouble. So there's a guy who's instantly got uh, Randy's respect. He's the only guy that he can talk to, bar, of course, the diary. Uh, but it's good to have, of course, that human connection. And uh, certainly that uh, sort of buddy, I want to say a buddy, sort of, sort of like a bromance, I guess. Uh, one that you can actually tell them that you, all the struggles that are going on in your life and this becomes massively important especially because of course what's about to happen he's often come to see me and we talk about this and that he is a man of the world and easy to get along with so just talking about nothing but because you're talking with somebody who is also a male um, and of a similar age and is somebody that you can talk to that friendship is really important uh, certainly, I mean, if the zombie apocalypse wasn't going to happen, this is still an important uh, part of Randy's uh, psychological journey, if you want to call it that, because it's really, really important to have friends like that and to have pe peers that you get along with, of course. On the way back, I came across a van parked at the side of the road. Two girls were on the shoulder, playing like little kids, playing and laughing. I've known those idiots for some time. They're always hanging around. The younger one, a tanned and chubby girl, couldn't stop smiling. She didn't say anything special, unlike the other one. They're from Vancouver and were looking for plants to help to cure goodness knows what illness. I kind of want to say that this is the eventual, kind of want to say this is like a representation of the innocence of humanities there. It's like, you know, two girls that are just trying to find plants to cure an illness. You know, because of course the governments and whatever try to fight the illness on both fronts, they try to kill the shadows and also try to cure the actual disease. Of course, it you know becomes completely futile and doesn't necessarily work. So it feels like that's yeah. And I suppose the representation of two girls is good because it, it you know it's they are both different. Because he says there that um, the younger one, the tan chubby girl, couldn't stop smiling. It's like this this girl represents probably the uh, I want to say the doctors and stuff, so that they're. Uh, optimistic that they can cure the disease it's, it feels like that you know she didn't say anything special unlike the other one so the other one you know that the other one's different from her so it's a different sort of strategy uh, to fight the zombie apocalypse which seems to be going in killing shadows doing that uh, different sort of methods um, but both are equally I want to say equally and I want to say there's an innocence there as if humanity will prevail but of course, they don't really get the chance to with the zombie apocalypse. I've warned them. The forest knows how to find its food. It's not safe for girls to go into the forest to pick flowers. The forest knows how to find its food is reference to nature. So although you're human and human beings can cook, uh, you know, conquer quite a lot of struggles, the nature will always find a way to take you down. <laughs> Pr pretty much. So the forest always knows how to find its food. So nature will, will complete a cycle. It, it will destroy you if um, not, not intentionally or anything. It'll just just is the way the circle of life works. So because this massive disease is about to come, yeah, you know, it, nature will sort of prevail uh, and nature will conquer you. Wild animals do their job, just like I do mine. When they were leaving over the engine sound, I could still hear one of the girls laugh. I hate city people. This is... Again, pretty interesting. So wild animals, I guess you could argue, is sort of the shadows. Girls going in and picking the forest, again, sort of naivety, but it's important to stick together. And then wild animals do their job just as I do mine. It's sort of like Randy's now, ex he's bringing on the responsibility. This is his job. So he has to, whatever, protect whatever the new world is going to be. Although it still hasn't happened yet, this is sort of like his psychological development and growth into this uh, I want to say hero, 
but essentially yeah something like that so even though it seems like nature's won humanity will still try and prevail and still try and keep going i, I don't necessarily want to say that it won't change tact but it's sort of like you know the people who are trying to cure the disease will still try to cure the disease and you see this a lot of times in the zombie movies and um, certainly the, the likes of i am legend where he keeps going and eventually does find a cure but it's like he just it's like that's what keeps him going that's a it's his motivation so they still need that motivation and they still need to do it in order to carry on surviving. I guess something like that. October 2nd. Dreams are my reality. October 24th. I'm afraid of the night. 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 I'm af- It's really interesting. So there's a whole lot of stuff scribbled out. So I don't know if something's happened here to the two girls. Because it seems like they were, it seems like it's setting them up for a, a major fall. So like that Randy will eventually find one of them severely hurt or, you know, God forbid, much worse. Um, dreams are his reality. So he was afraid of going to sleep in the previous chapters, but now dreams are his reality. So now does he want to go to sleep? Or is it sort of just saying that there's no way to escape reality? Even even in the dreamland, there it's still real. So it's it feels like something like that. Even even in the dreams, even if it is a nightmare, your reality is still a nightmare. So there's no escape. I guess something like that. And him saying that he's afraid of the night, he's sort of losing it a wee bit here. I don't, I don't know what's going on, what's happened. So if something as bad has happened to the girls, and then he's afraid of the night, why is he afraid of the night? What has happened? It's it's really interesting to see. I mean, it certainly certainly piques your interest for what what's going on in the diary, but again, him being afraid of the night, what does that mean? Shadows come out of the night, of course. Can't really see them. Maybe foreshadowing for that, I guess, as well. November eleventh, the break after the work, the rain after the fire, the rest after the war, the death after life. Sometimes I feel as if I were sitting at the edge of a volcano about to erupt. Which he is, of course, because the end of humanity is just about to come. So it's really interesting that he actually is sort of nearly predicting this, the the demise of the human race, but has accepted the responsibility of a sort of protector of it, if you want to, if you want to call it that. My nerves, the trembles in my handwriting when I write. Everything is inside me as it has always been. Everything is inside me, but there are times that it decides to show up. My feet hang over a void of sulfur and ashes, and the heat of the melting stone starts to traverse my spine. So he knows things are about to, the stuff is going hit to the, hit the fan pretty, uh, pr- in a pretty big way. He's not quite sure how, but he can sense that there's danger coming. It is then when I know that I must go back home with my family. But if I don't do that, it will happen. It will happen whether you like it or not, like the girls in the forest. It will happen whether you like it or not. It will happen. So it's going to happen. The end of the world is coming. It's going to happen. Even if you're with your family, even if you're girls, even if you're naive, it doesn't matter about you being innocent or anything. Nature doesn't care. It's coming for you and it will happen. You will die, I guess. You could probably even argue that this is sort of like a, uh, not even just about the zombie apocalypse, but it's sort of like a, a look at, at life in general. Because you can, you know, try... Try as you might uh, to avoid death. It's going to happen. Regardless of whether you're surrounded by loved ones or not, you will die. It's just one of those horrible realities of life. that, And that sort of seems like, like what Randy's sort of saying here. It's going to happen. Like the girls in the forest, they will also die. My family will also die. And I will die. Regardless of what I want, it will happen. It's, again, interesting. I don't know why on earth they returned to the mountains. They were warned. Last month I warned them. I told them not to come back. Hell is them, and they are the ones who go into the forest to look for trouble. So the fact that he said, like the girls in the forest, it will happen as a sort of nod towards death implies that both of the girls have been killed, I think. Especially with the, I don't know why on earth they returned to the mountains. They were warned, therefore they were destroyed. Is that, you know, essentially, they didn't heed the warning, which, again, is, I, I guess the girls in this here are humanity. So they were warned 
but it's 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 unclear. Like, don't go into the forest. But we don't. You don't know how the actual virus started, and so you don't know whether it was humanity or yeah, humanity's curiosity that caused this, or some other thing. So it, it, it's interesting the wording here. Um, but yeah, I can't stop myself from defending it. My homeland. I am an animal that defends its territory. This is sort of like Randy saying, "Well, you know, I can't help you." If you aren't willing to change, if you aren't willing to heed my advice and my warnings, there's nothing I can really do for you. So, sorry. <laughs> I'm in charge, and the vermin finish the job. So, again, him resp- accepting responsibility. This is his homeland. This is his territory. He is going to protect it. He is the protector. He is the hero. Um, and the vermin finish the job. So he's... It's weird the way he worded that, because it's like, he's the protector, so his job is to protect but then the vermin finish the job, so it's like he knows. He knows that ultimately his. Uh, I want to say he knows that his job or his role, he he can't protect him. Ultimately, he just will not be able to protect humanity. It's just too much for him, I guess, uh, or just yeah, too much. Not that it's too much of a responsibility for him to handle. He's quite happy to accept the responsibility, but maybe he's just maybe it's just the way human nature is, or the way that. Just the task is just so monumental that because it's an apocalypse, we are we, we are destined to fail. We will fail. I, I, I know something like that. December fifth. In spite of the migraine, I may still be able to forget everything and be only aware of the good things inside me. This is an interesting one. I want to kind of say that this is even though that he can feel the warning of the end of humanity, he's quite happily he's quite happy to be blissfully unaware of it. Uh, or deliberately unaware of it, should I say, sort of as if he's like putting it behind behind himself and only concentrating on the good. He's got a bad feeling. He can't quite explain it. So he's like, oh, well, I mean, I can't really explain this bad feeling. So, and everything seems to be okay in life, you know, as okay as it can be. So therefore, I'm just going to focus on the good things for now. Something like that. When my maternal grandmother, who was already over 80, died, the only person she had beside her was a nurse. The old woman lived alone and died alone. The girl said that before my grandmother died, she lifted her head up off the pillow and looked from one side to the other, as if she were trying to find someone, and then she lay down again and died. The fact that his grandmother lifts her head up, it's not said whether it's his mum's grandmother or his father's. I assume that it's his dad's grandmother, and she's looking up to find him. So it's sort of like that... It's proof that it's not Randy's fault that his dad left. His dad left because he was he, he was a no good dad. He was a no good person. But he didn't even stay in touch with his mum as well. Or, you know, Randy's grandmother. So the fact that she looked up, tried to see if he was there and wasn't there. And then was just like, mm, he's, he's not coming. And then was quite happy to die. Like she, she wanted to see him before he died. But before she died, she knew the end was there. And he wasn't there for her. So the fact that... The fact that he wasn't even there for his own mum wouldn't have mattered because it does. It means that it means that Randy isn't isn't the blame for his, as as usually is the case. Like it's it's never the kid's fault that their dad walks out on them. But this is just sort of it. Just feels like it's trying to hammer home that point. It's like no, Randy's not the problem here. It was his father. There is no doubt that a void surrounds me, but I am also sure that I haven't completely fallen into it. So this is interesting. I'm talking about a void. He's on the edge of the void. I want to say he's on the edge of losing his mind, but not quite. It's more, it's more that the apocalypse is coming. He's at the center of it. He is responsible for protecting uh, humanity. So he hasn't completely... He is in the void. He knows that there's serious danger coming in, and that it, it, he, but he's not in it yet. He's not in the danger, so the danger's not quite there yet. Again, I, I, that sort of sees my interpretation of it. At times, I feel that if I lift up my head, I will be able to cross to the other side. So that means that it's very, very close. We are seriously coming close to the end of the world here. Anyway, yes, that feels like a pretty good place to leave it. So, um, yeah, rate, comment, and subscribe. Yes, I hope you're enjoying this diary entry, and I hope that you can certainly tolerate my analysis of it. You can email me at retrotk2 at gmail.com with any other Let's Plays you would like to see on the channel. Thank you for watching this. And I'll see you in the next video.